Former Pennsylvania governor and former DNC chair Ed Rendell, uh, great to see you on the program today. So when I was covering campaigns back in my day, not too long ago, mm -hmm. enthusiasm, money, message, EMM, -M, that's how I would term it in my, my live shots. That's what you're looking for. Republicans right now with this president have the enthusiasm. How are the Democrats going to match it? Well, it's interesting. Democrats, and I tell my Democratic friends, don't be overconfident. Don't listen to those early Trump polls. I mean, for example, the poll that uh, Trump's pollster did a month ago had him losing Pennsylvania 55 to 39. I don't think there's any way in hell that he's 16 points behind in Pennsylvania. Donald Trump enters this election cycle in better position than he did in 2016 in two regards. One, he's an incumbent president presiding on a good economy, and that's always a plus. And two, unlike 16, when Hillary Clinton had far more money than Donald Trump, he's going to enter this election cycle with a tremendous lead in money raised over whoever the Democratic nominee is. As far as enthusiasm goes, my Democratic friends say to me, well, look at Virginia a week ago. Only 90,000 Republicans showed up at the primary. 168,000 Democrats showed up, almost twice as many. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump can only get voters out for one election, and that's when Donald Trump's on the ballot. Well, that's he cannot, a... he, We saw in 18, he couldn't generate a turnout to match the Democratic turnout, but he wasn't on the ballot. So, so if I go by what you're saying, then uh, he is going to be on the ballot, obviously, in 2020, and Democrats have an uphill road. And I understand what you're cautioning them, because when polling comes out really early and it looks like you got this, people don't go to the polls, period. It's not like they're going to vote they for the other they, guy. They're just not going to show up for your team. But except there's the, the reason, and normally what you say is true, Harris, and none of our candidates in and of themselves can produce that type of turnout, anywhere close to the enthusiasm that Donald Trump does. But there is one reason why our voters are going to go to the polls in record numbers last year, next year. Why? It has nothing to do with our candidates. It has to do with one person, Donald Trump. But if you don't, okay, so remember, I said it was enthusiasm, money, and message. If you don't have a message to bring to the people, what are you selling? You've got 24 people up on a dais. Actually, you don't even have room for them all. So in the first Democratic debates, you're mm -hmm. only going to see 20, <laughs> 10 and 10. So but when neither, you have that kind of, I mean, the, the messaging is all over the road. With one clear point from Bernie Sanders, he's a socialist. How are you going to sell that? Well, first of all, the messaging in the primaries is not nearly as important as the messaging when there's a nominee. And I think the nominee will have a clear message. And the message will be that what Donald Trump told the average working American he would do in 2016, he hasn't done. He Remember in 2016, he went all around the country saying, I'm going to enact a tax cut. People like me are not going to get any benefits from it. Well, it turns what out about the all the job cut, creation? 60 percent of, of the benefits of the tax cut went to the top 1 percent. Donald Trump, the day he signs the bill, goes down to Mar-a-Lago and tells all the rich people, I just made you a whole lot richer. So he lied to the American people when he said they wouldn't be getting, that they would be getting the majority of benefits. Governor which is Rindell, why the tax can I just step in with so this point, unpopular. though? Why then? Why then do you see such low unemployment, the GDP rising? I know you want to call it a lie or a broken promise, but when you poll people and, and some of them will tell you, well, life is better off now because I know I can go out and get a job. There is a gap in training. I will give you that. There is some ground to seat on that. But you started by saying an incumbent is tough to beat with a good economy. You can, you're speaking out of two sides of the freeway here, the going and the coming. No, it's tough to beat, not impossible to beat, number one. And number two, the good economy hasn't affected the people that Donald Trump said he would help. There are farmers, ordinary farmers, decidedly middle class, who are struggling to stay above water because of the tariffs. Those people haven't been helped by Donald Trump's economy. Right. I, I... There are people who are working two or three jobs. They haven't been helped by Donald Trump's economy. But the main point is... Americans are seeing broken promises made by the president that he hasn't been able to fulfill. And that's why I think he, he, he can win. There's no question in my mind. 
Well, he has history on his side because in the open era, we, we've only seen a couple of presidents who were incumbents not win. 